Right, so before I start, I'd like to say what an honour and a privilege it is to be here tonight representing my industry. <laughs> Amongst the class fighters who stood with the miners in the 1984 strike. <laughs> you can't help but draw the similarities and parallels between what the Tories did to the mining industry then and what the bastards are doing to my industry now. I've been part of the steel industry since leaving school 25 years ago. And like many of my colleagues, I was told on my first day, well then guys, you've got a job for life. In the four years of my apprenticeship, I started in Lamwern in 99, and by the time I finished my apprenticeship in 2003, most of the heavy end of Lamwern had gone. Ebervale Steelworks had closed altogether. Whiteheads had downsized and moved to a different site. And I, along with 30 of my apprenticeship year, were transferred down to Port Albert. Fast forward to today, and across the UK, we've seen cuts and closures in Ravenscraig, Redcar, Teesside, Rotherham, Scunthorpe, Port Albert, Newport, just to name a few. <laughs> Quite simply, our steel industry is under attack. We are right now standing at the precipice, and there are effectively two parts in front of us. On the one hand, we have Tata and the government their industrial vandalism, looking to directly decimate 2,800 livelihoods between Port Talbot and Lamwin. And around 10,000 more indirectly, whilst receiving 500 million pound in funding. On the other hand, we've got a favor transition to electric art furnace technology and investment to grow the whole UK steel industry for the future. We've witnessed generations of degradation of industry in this country and the huge reduction of highly skilled and well-paid jobs that have gone with it in the process. All across the UK, we've seen cuts, particularly in heavy industry, coal mines, automotive, steel. It's the same story over and over. Our communities, like the one I grew up in, left in destitution. Tata and our politicians talk of transition funds and support for affected people and communities. These same promises have been made to ex-mining communities and ex-steel communities. Ebervale, just as one example, more than 20 years on from the closure of their steel industry, still struggling to climb the socio-economic ladder. The transition funds they promised either don't come to fruition or don't make a difference to working class people like us. Port Talbot is the last bastion of heavy industry in South Wales. We've been there for over 100 years. We've absorbed some of the displaced workers when other industries in the area are gone. But we really are the last bastion of heavy industry. Where will my 2,800 brothers and sisters go? We've already seen the accelerated closure of our coke ovens. They were the last coke ovens in the UK. Every ounce of coke used in the UK from now on will have to be imported. Without us fighting and without government intervention, the rest of the heavy end will go the same way. And this is why it's so important for us to fight. We're fighting. We're fighting for a fairer transition, where we retain one blast furnace operation at least until the electric arc furnace is brought online. This would mean that we would not have to rely on imported steel from halfway around the world, steel that is still produced in blast furnaces, but where they're far more carbon intensive than ours. We could continue to be self-sufficient and we would have a guaranteed steel supply for our hot mill and our downstream operations. This transition is a reality in other steel plants in the UK and in Europe. And whilst Tata are closing our blast furnaces, they're bringing them online in Holland and in India. Absolutely. We are being failed by our government and by our owners. They've shown that they have absolutely no industrial strategy and no plan or vision for UK steel. Steel is a foundation industry in the UK. It plays a massive part in all our lives. The cars we drive, the knives and forks we use to eat, to the buildings, office blocks and factories we work in, they're all made using steel. Steel is part of the long-term green economy in this country. Ultimately, the decisions lie with our politicians as to whether they want to support us so that we can utilize the plant, the technology, the workforce and the materials available to us to make it ourselves, or whether it's made somewhere else in the world and shipped into us. Don't forget, some of the Tories would have you believe that they closed the pits because they had green credentials. 
What an absolute lie. They closed them because they hated the trade unions. They hated organised labour. What they represent and everything they stood for. Good pay and a decent living for working class people like us. Deindustrialisation is a choice. It's a political choice. It was a political choice in the 80s and it's a political choice now. We've shown that there is an alternative. Our industry can and should be there for future generations. The market for green steel is set to grow in the coming years. Oh shit, I lost my place. <laughs> Proper investment, we can grow the industry. We can see more jobs, not fewer. More employment, not less. More prosperity and thriving communities. Not the shells of communities that have been left across the UK as a result of deindustrialisation. We are fighting for the UK, sorry, for the future of the UK steel industry and for the future of the green economy. LGSM knew in the 80s that their support for striking miners would bring communities together. We must not forget that lesson. The Tories will try to divide us again. It seems today's enemy are people in small boats, but whoever they attack, we know it's only by standing together that we can beat the Tories and the bosses.